A month after its release, I was finally able to see Black Adam, the newest film in the DCEU, whatever that is at this point. I heard a lot of mixed things about this film going into it, and most of it was that it was either good or that it was somewhat average, with not too many people calling it bad. So I went into this film with, I don't even know what to call it, expectations. I was just expecting a superhero movie, and that's what we get here. After watching the film, I have to say it's all right. There will be spoilers in this video, just quick warning if you haven't seen it yet, but I think it's been long enough to talk spoilers. For a DCEU film, this is pretty good. In fact, if that's the standard we're going for here, it's probably incredible. But for a superhero comic book movie, it's average at best. Nothing about this film sets it apart from any other superhero or comic book film before it. It feels like a 2011 film with 2022 special effects. Which brings me to the first thing I really liked about this film, is that the special effects looked incredible in this movie. I was genuinely impressed with it. This movie looks good. It looks really good. I think all the lightning and finishers that Black Adam does looks awesome. Like it was it was awesome to look at. Another thing I really liked about this film was the fight scenes. I thought they were pretty cool and done somewhat well. Again, like a lot of other things in this film, it doesn't break any new ground, but they were fun to watch, which is what you want from a comic book movie. Great fights that are fun to watch, and Black Adam delivers that. My favorite characters in this film were Dr. Fate and Adam Smasher. I mean, Dr. Fate is the best part of this film. It's, it, it's not even close. It's nowhere close. Don't even debate me on this. You can try all you want in the comments. You're not going to change my mind. Dr. Fate is the best part of this film. He steals every scene he's in, and he's just, he's so cool. He's so cool. I may be a little biased. I love Dr. Fate. <laughs> I hope this isn't the last time we see him, though, because he, he, he's great. <laughs> Please, James Gunn, bring back Dr. Fate. I don't think this is the last time we'll see him, but if it is, I will be greatly disappointed. Adam Smasher is good. I didn't really know what to think about him going into this film. I think Noah Centineo does a great job here. The character's good, but he's not nearly used enough. He's used for a couple jokes and then like two fight scenes, and that's about it. I just wish he had more to do in this film. And then the JLA in general, I really enjoyed. I liked seeing them go up against Black Adam. I think it really puts into perspective how powerful Black Adam is, that he's able to take on a team like this by himself. But this film isn't without its problems, for sure. One is tone. I it, it didn't really decide what it wanted to be. It was dark, kind of moody, and not too many jokes at the beginning of the movie. And then Black Adam showed up, which you think would have only increased the moody, dark tone. But then he starts making jokes with the kid in the movie. I don't even remember his name. We'll get to him in a second. But it, the comedy in this film doesn't fit the tone at all, which is kind of an another problem this film has. But it just, it, it couldn't decide whether it wanted to be a Marvel movie or a classical DC dark movie. You can feel that tension within the film. I personally think they should have went with the darker route, especially with Black Adam being an anti-hero. I think that was a missed opportunity. Yeah, the comedy is weird. It's really weirdly timed and often misplaced. There are way too many characters that are trying to act as comedic relief in this film. In my opinion, the only character you need to be comedic relief in this film is Adam Smasher. So just have him be the comedic relief when you want to make a couple jokes and then keep the rest of the film dark. I think this film, again, would have done better if it leaned more into that dark tone, kind of like the Batman did. And we know how well that movie did. <laughs> it also doesn't help that The Rock doesn't give a good performance here. It's often flat and lifeless, almost like he has to get through this movie to get to the stories he actually likes and actually wants to be a part of. And don't get me wrong, I actually like the casting of The Rock as Black Adam. I, 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 I like that. He just doesn't give a good performance here in this movie. I also wasn't a huge fan of a couple changes they made to Black Adam himself. Like, throughout the film, he didn't really feel like a ruler or a champion of Kondok. And I know I'm not going to say that name right, but I don't know how to, so I'm sorry. 
that's kind of like his whole thing. That's my understanding of Black Adam is that he rules Kondok. Throughout this film, he doesn't feel like a ruler or a champion in any way. He just kind of seems like a guy that likes to hit things and blow people up. You never get the sense that this guy cares for the people of Kondok. Also didn't like how they changed his banishment and imprisonment. I, I think the simple explanation they gave in Shazam was great. And I don't know why they kind of decided to change it here. In the comics, for the most part, he was more corrupted with power. And that's what led him to be imprisoned by Shazam. I get why they made the change, made him like rage out because of the murder of his son and all this stuff, you know, to make him more likable. But I don't think it works here. This is an anti-hero, and I think if you lean more into the anti and the villain side, you're going to get a better Black Adam in this film and throughout the DCEU. I also wasn't huge on Shazam not picking him, but his son. That's a minor thing. I don't doesn't affect the movie at all for me. It's just kind of like, oh, I don't really know why they changed that. Also, another thing, I don't understand why when he said Shazam, he didn't die. This dude is 5,000 years old. In the comics, they even understood this, that when, like, time still catches up to you in your normal body. I don't know why they changed that. I thought it was weird. Another thing about this film is the dialogue. Oh my gosh. For the most part, it's somewhat all right, but there are other times where it is downright awful and cringy. Except from Dr. Fate. I thought Dr. Fate did, again, fantastic. He can't do any wrong in this film. Dialogue struggles in this film. It does. Another thing I found really cringy was the whole mother-son thing they had. The whole story line there the whole like subplot there i didn't have a problem with it at the beginning of the film but towards the end of the movie i was i was left wondering why they were still there i don't i never understood that they often act as like plot devices more than characters which felt kind of weird i don't know they just didn't fit into the movie at all towards the end and i was left like i want to see another fight between hawkman and black adam and less about the mother and son or them saving the son from something. I don't remember. This kind of goes along into another one of my points towards the end of the film. When they're fighting at the end and there's this whole like rebellion against the demons that are coming against them. It's like it, it felt so cringy and I was like why? Why do they feel the need? Like the gang that suppressed them isn't exactly fighting them i know like their leader is the head of whatever it didn't make much sense and it was really cringy and they didn't do anything black adam defeated sabak like two seconds after they decided to do this this part this scene could have been cut from the entire film and it wouldn't have made a single difference i don't know why they added it i think they really wanted that two hour runtime, so they were just they were like you know what screw it leave it in <laughs> we gotta get we gotta hit that runtime another thing is i found the villain of this film to be quite boring and dull the bach is a cool character and a concept that i think they could have done way better there isn't really a good reason for why Ishmael wanted the crown other than he's evil or he wants power. There's no depth to this villain at all, and I, which may have been something that stuck out to me just because I'd watched Black Panther right before this and Neymar's actually a decent villain. I mean, he looked cool and the fight was cool, but it's just like, why is he doing what he's doing, you know? I also think they didn't explain Sabak very well in this film. I think they could have dedicated more time to him and less to the mother-son. He felt like a phase one, like, origin story villain, which he kind of is here for the DCEU. But he's just another bland villain who I probably won't remember after this review comes out. Overall, Black Adam isn't a bad film at all. It's just not anything special. Yes, it reintroduces Cavill Superman, which is awesome, but... That's just a post credit scene. It's a fun film and it's definitely a good DCEU movie, but the bar there isn't exactly very high. It'll be interesting to see what direction James Gunn decides to take the character. To be honest, the future of the DCEU looks very bright, but its hierarchy, well, it didn't really change much here. That's about it from me. Let me know what y'all thought about Black Adam down in the comment section below. Always appreciate y'all's thoughts and y'all's feedback. But yeah. 
that's it from me. Love you guys. Hope you all have an absolutely fantastic day. And I'll see you all in the next one. But until then, peace out, bro skillets.